Hey guys, so just before I crack on with today's video, I'm running a little bit of an experiment. So for the majority of my videos on this channel, I've used the Canon Vixia HF200, and it's a grand old camera. Uh, it's using its third battery now because the battery has been used uh, really into the ground, and I've been using this camera now since probably since around 2014, 2013 now, and um, it still does the old uh, does the old HD pretty well, so I've not had a particular reason to upgrade it. And the battery on it actually lasts for, uh, well, five hours, it's telling me now on the little uh, on the little display, that five hours. Now that probably is a bit of an overestimation, but you can, I mean, I've never had a problem on a day's worth of recording on a single battery on that. Um, and so, so they're pretty great, but, Ever since I took the Canon Vixia out of the box, I've never been super happy with the sound. Um, part of that is just because camera sounds in general tend to be um, a uh, you know a level below, for example, sound recorders like the Handy H1 or even the Handy H4, which I sometimes crack out for special occasions. The Handy H1 is just a nice bit of sound recording kit that's all in a self-contained unit, but uses more... Um, F, well, it, it takes more time to really set up and use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and run through the audio from this video from that camera through Audacity and see if I can't tweak it up a bit. And uh, because that, because yeah, the the, um, the most difficult part for filming or the, the most difficult part of making any video is the filming process itself because there are so many sort of parameters that need to be met. You know, batteries need to, needs to be charged. Um, I need to find somewhere vaguely quiet, and that's actually sometimes more difficult than you might seem, especially right spring. Spring, if you noticed, when the good weather starts coming in, everyone, everyone starts mowing their lawns. It's like a chorus of lawn mowers, and most people don't have particularly big lawns around it. You could use a push mower, easy, lazy. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so, 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 like, for example, if I want, you know, like, if it's uh, sometimes just at lunch, and I'll be like, oh, I feel like filming a video, and then this chorus of lawn mowers will start going off, and uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, that being said, um, I'm going to try and mix up how I film and I'm going to try and, and, and see if I can uh, tweak my workflow, expedite the process and get out a little bit more content because I do feel that I've definitely been lacking in, in quantity and I don't think the quality, truth, truth be told, is like, has, has, has increased to the point where it's, uh, it's made up for it because I used to do near daily videos on this channel. I used to love doing near daily videos and, um, some, and I've never like, officially decided to draw a line under making regular videos or take a break or anything like that short of the occasional week here and there but um but i've never got close to doing daily videos again and i really would love to get to that stage at some point um because i did enjoy enjoy doing that so much and like i say this this year it could be if the if the apocalypse is you know the YouTube ad apocalypse is keep coming, it could very well be my last one here on YouTube in the capacity that I am, and I'm determined to give it the best go that I can, and um, and I'm going to look at it at the end of the year and I'm going to see like how much time I can sort of then afford to put into into YouTube now because you know a couple of years ago it you know with this channel and the YouTube ecosystem in general looked like it was headed trending in a really good direction like you could make a a living off of a channel without too many subscribers because YouTube was doing this great job at going out and bringing in all these advertisers and now many of these advertisers are moving away but then many advertisers are moving away from TV and away from Facebook as well and they got to go somewhere because of course with Facebook you got the Cambridge Analytica thing and TV well in fact, it was in recent years that spending on internet advertising has surpassed that on TV. And it's because advertisers often know that they can just get more bang for their buck. Like, I, I don't even know what the ratio is, but I remember when I used to work in marketing to get your product just, like, shown in, in on TV. Uh, and, and I'm talking, like, in the background for a budget price. You're talking about £16,000. Um, and that's, like, you know, your, your very bare entry into any kind of uh, product appearance on TV. It's ridiculously expensive. It's a racket. It's what it is. It's a racket. I'm sure a lot of producers just go around making an absolute mint off of uh, businesses trying to get a little bit of exposure on TV, which doesn't pay back. It doesn't pay back. One thing I've learned in marketing is that you can you can put out an advert to millions of people and if you get it wrong no one not a single person will get back to you it's uh, it's remarkable the ability for the human mind to phase out boring information anyway this is a ramble because someone in my last video said 10 minutes and he calls this a rambly video Pff, practically a vine got to agree with that got to agree so i thought i'd give a good old 5 minute waffle 
before talking about what is actually a rather uh, basic subject. Uh, this is my uh, my smartphone here, this uh, grubby old black mirror. It's a Eula phone. It's a cheap old Chinese phone. It cost me about 130 quid. And then I was stupid enough to get insurance on top of that. So it was about 160 quid. Um, and uh, it's a really good phone. Now, I know that Chinese phones have a bit of a reputation, but I got this one because I know someone who's who's very much into phones in a professional way and uh, and he recommended this as a diamond in the rough and boy was was he right um it's a big phone i forget what it is now it's um it's like it's uh, i say it's a big phone like i can't even remember how the the actual screen size itself uh 5.7 if memory served correctly and because it's 5.7 like it's most mostly battery so the battery lasts forever i char charge it up about once every three days that being in mind, of course, I still only have my F-Droid applications on there, so it's not exactly like um, it's it's overloaded with with uh, all these apps that use cameras and and GPS and Bluetooth and all this. It is a reasonably low level as far as smartphones go, but you know, truth be told, pretty happy with it. Um, but one thing that I did do, I mean, obviously. It is Android, and Android comes with a huge amount of baggage. But you can choose not to sign into an Android account. I don't have a clue how much good that does. And uh, other than the SIM card, which is obviously my own, um, there's not really any. Uh, the only and the, and the only other thing I'm even I think signed into is my email and Mastodon. So there's you know that the, that's basically uh, really what uh, what my phone's all about. But I decide to encrypt my phone, uh, and this is uh, certainly when I decided to do it at the time. It was it was the big thing to encrypt your phone, encrypt the data on your phone, because heaven forbid, should your phone get lost or stolen, and some nefarious cretin should find it, they could then weasel some information out of that phone and then use it to rob or harm you. However, encryption is disk encryption. And disk encryption only works when the device is off, it is, is resting. Uh, because when you're running the hard disk drive, it needs to be switched on and uh, decoded. So um, your phone, when you choose to enable encryption, um, as far as I'm aware, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but as far as I'm aware, when your phone is on, your it is not decrypted because I there is no issue with gaining access to the files on the internal storage of my phone here being encrypted and when the pin is on because when the pin is on um, it's not encrypted it's just pinned right and then it's only when you turn it off completely that's when the data is encrypted so and since you can actually charge up a phone using you uh, uh, using a pretty standard USB socket nowadays, you can keep this phone running, or any phone running, for a given period of time while you either brute force a pin, which for a four-digit pin is is no time at all, or um, or just access the information straight up and see what information you can get off internal storage, because I guarantee there'll be something that you could use on most people's phones. Uh, scrape it with your computer and see what you can get out of that. Encrypted or unencrypted, you're not going to come up against much resistance from, from what I can see. You know, once a phone falls into the wrong hands, if you don't have a um, wipe from a phone, you know, like you can do a remote wipe or what have you, which admittedly is one of probably the better features that Google has. Uh, and, and if you do sign into Google, so when you when I chose not to sign into Google, I chose to give up the feature to remotely wipe my um, my device, and that's a secure. That's something that you know you should be aware of if you're vaguely security conscious. Now that being said, I don't know how it wipes. Uh, for example, <laughs> for what, what I mean by that is like if it just does a basic delete. Well, if you you know you can then sc um, scrub through the uh, the disk and, and and still find something, but if it does a proper shred, then um, and as I understand, doing a proper shred on an SD, um, a solid state hard drive is, is quicker. And, uh, is quicker. Uh, but generally speaking, it's not something you you want to do because it wears down the read write cycles. Again, not an expert on this, so please uh, refer to the the comments section for any corrections. Because um, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, but yeah. But there is a uh, something of a cost with using an encrypted hard drive, and that's on performance. Now. 
This is a pretty decent phone and I've not noticed uh, a performance even when recording video. So it would appear that the shrewd thing to do, regardless of your status of encryption, might be to minimise the amount of personally identifiable information or sensitive information on one's phone, but even that's quite difficult. I mean, at this very moment, I'm rethinking about whether or not I should even have my email account on here on this phone. Mastodon, I'm a little less um, worried about. Um, yeah, I suppose someone could do some damage if they let loose on my Mastodon account, but really the most damage it'll do is a mild amount of embarrassment, um, I would hope. Um, there's certainly no per uh, personal identifier identifying information on the back end of it, what you see is what you get with those kind of social networks. Um, which is one of the reasons why why I quite like it, you know, you sort of treat everything on it as public, but um, um, but I suppose some damage could be done even with that, but it's email, I think, is really the, uh, the one that you want to protect, and having email on a phone, hmm, I know, it seems to be like the standard thing to do, you sign up with Gmail, I don't even know if there's an option not to have email on your phone if you sign in with Gmail. So, um, but but having, like, to me, the email is like probably the most sensitive uh, account that I have. Um, so it would make sense to, to actually take it off the phone, because it's like you don't want that anywhere near an insecure platform, I guess. Um, certainly something to think about once I've put this video down, but I think really whether or not I decide to take off encryption, I'm certainly going to, to be cognizant of that. Um, but I would like to turn the question over to you. Do you guys uh, encrypt your mobile devices? I can perhaps um, see maybe the benefit with maybe a laptop, because you turn a laptop off when you're not using it, when it's maybe in a briefcase or what have you, but when a phone's in your pocket, a phone isn't always on device which means it's an always unencrypted device, providing you can keep it powered. But because every phone just uses a micro USB slot and you don't need the pin number to charge a phone, maybe you should. Maybe that should be an, a, you know, a new security requirement that to charge your phone, you've got to put in the, uh, the pin number because, you know, and I do worry about the day. Um, I've seen uh, some concept designs for, for houses and architecture and things like that. And some of them have USB charging outlets, so outlets on the wall, specifically designed for charging, you know, like uh, out from USB. So that includes things like uh, phones, electronic cigarettes, uh, MP3 players and the like, uh, video cameras and so forth. So, um, and that is, it concerns me greatly. In fact, even in London, and I'm sure other cities do this, there is a rent a uh, charging sc scheme. So you basically, it's like a, it looks like a set of lockers and you open up one of these lockers and it has a little micro USB lead in it. You plug your phone in and then you lock your phone in the locker. The idea is that you can maybe go around into the uh, food court, have something to eat, and then you've got a few uh, few minutes left on your phone. And, and things like this worry me because it's only a matter of time before scammers set up these these um, booths where you can charge your phone and you plug in your mp3 and it just scrapes it for data. It's, you know, like that's, that's um, and, it, and, and, and when we're charging our phones, I, I think, and, and, and again, maybe this is paranoia, maybe it's not, because the thing is, you know, data can be scraped through, through you know, situations like that en masse by, th by the thousands and then can be sold on to goodness knows who. So, um, you know, like back, I suppose, you know, you can think of this with like 1950s era paranoia, where it's like you have to imagine a situation where you're being a specifically pinpointed and targeted for, uh, you know, as, as a mark for a, for a con job. Whereas nowadays you've got phishing, which is where, you know, a lot of, you know, it's where a lot more common for con men to cast a large net in the hope to catch one or two people off their guard. And I'm not even going to call those people idiots because I've been caught off guard by phishing as well. Um, and we can thank the Podesta emails because Podesta himself was was caught in a phishing scam. That's that's how we got those. So a um, little bit of politics trivia there for you. Um, but yeah, so um, security important, and I, I've just been thinking about it now. And uh, yeah, it makes sense to 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 have some encryption levels in on a laptop where you'll turn it off because then someone turning it on has a, has a complete inability to then access the hard drive. But with an always on device like the phone, I don't think so. Anyway, um, I am going to wrap up, but like I say, I could use your thoughts on this subject because I am no, by no, no means a security, securities expert. And whenever I talk about anything to do with security, um, Please always double check in the comment section below for um, and check in the description for any pinned comments or anything like that because um, th there are many people who watch uh, regular viewers of this channel who um, 
know far more about such things than I do. I have um, worked with the security in that sector once or twice, but it's one of those things that you need, uh, you, you know, to, to speak with any authority. Regular, updated, practical, uh, almost in the field knowledge, truth be told, and I certainly don't have in the field knowledge with security. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's encrypt is about my, my, my level. So anywho, anyway, uh, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.